Okay, this is um, a promised tutorial um, for um, DxO Optics. It's really a very, very quick run through, and just to show how I pre process the images, um, this being the target image here, um, before I bring them into Photoshop. Right, here's DxO Optics. Uh, when you first load it up, it loads up in the organise or folder view. Um, and. Uh, uh, where you can navigate then to uh, the set of images or single image that you want to edit. Um, for example, here's, uh, here's one there, and you notice there it, it uh, makes an automatic adjustment as soon as it sees an image uh, in, in the line here. If you want to see the before and after, after just well, a Control and D. You can see there. Now, to edit the image, you can either double click it or click on Customize up there. Just going to double click the image there and then that brings up as you can see the, the details so you've got the thumbnail over here all the EXIF information including ISO, f-stop, shutter speed etc etc so it's shot in RAW, aperture priority, uh, multi-zone metering uh, on my Nikon 1 J5 over on the right are the editing tools the, the real key to everything uh, now the first thing I do, one of the main things with DxO is noise reduction, um, especially using a little um, uh, J5 or CX one inch sensor. Uh, noise reduction is a, is a huge bonus for this program. Um, by default it's on HQ fast, uh, where you really want it, if, especially if you've shot in RAW, um, is to switch to Prime. That gives you a much, much higher quality, uh, more accurate noise reduction. Uh, and what I'd, generally do is check my ISO over on the left over here uh, and then uh, I will adjust the luminance over here so for in this case 400 ISO I'll probably put it up to around about 50 and you get a little preview pane here it won't give you a preview the whole lot because the noise reduction is massively processor intensive uh, and it, uh, it would slow your computer down to nothing to try and give you a a live view of the whole lot so you have to wait until it's done its processing and you've exported to see the the net result uh, but it is worthwhile all uh, right so just going to close that down once i've changed the noise reduction i then work from the top down with well, this image <coughs> um, i've processed it before um, but i've just left the white raw white balance uh, as default uh, didn't need any changing there exposure compensation um, I increase that to on this image to uh, point plus point four. Um, just going to type that in manually. Uh, there we go, plus point four, um, which is enough for that. Uh, DxO Smart Lighting is uh, what the program automatically applies to your image when it uh, analyses it itself. You can change all the settings in there. Um, as it is, that's. Uh, um, pretty much okay for me on, on the smart lighting. Uh, I, might, I might want to increase it just a little bit, maybe bring it up to 55. And you can see there it's made the whole image uh, a lot brighter, um, but it's also lost a bit of contrast. We'll sort that out in a minute. Selective tone, leaving that alone for now because what I generally do with every image I load is I test out to see what effect the XO Clearview has. Clearview is designed uh, really for clarity if you're in a hazy situation, something like that works wonders. But it can work wonders on images that are not hazy too. Other images, it ruins them. Um, like a face, for example, you probably want to steer clear of using uh, Clearview. Um, but on this particular image, as you can see there, it works wonders. I'll just turn that off again so you can see the difference it makes. Uh, each one of these settings you can turn on and off with the switch as well as going into the uh, settings and change it all and get it how you want it um, but I like the effect that that has for me um, contrast that's mainly to bring detail back into the image um, I don't go too mad with it um, but on this one basically set the uh, the main contrast to um, 8 the micro contrast what really does the detail sharpness uh, there, so I'll generally have that around about 20 to 25. Fine contrast, be careful with that one because you'll bring the noise back in. So just maybe um, around about three for that. And what I'm doing there is just giving it 
edge sharpness around so then when I export to DNG and bring it into Photoshop, Photoshop has got some nice detailed edges to work with and, and improve upon. Um, and with a the colour accentuation, the, these are very subtle effects these have here. They don't have an, an enormous effect on the overall image, but vibrancy I'll put up to 23 and saturation around about, around about 7 or 8 or something like that. Uh, we'll do, um, but they are quite subtle, and you might end up wanting to do those a bit more when you bring it into Photoshop, or you can increase them excessively there. So that when you export to the NG, it seems to lose some of that vibrance and uh, and saturation. Uh, but that's basically it. There are lots of other tools in there you can use, like the crop, um, automatic horizon tool. If you've got a slightly skewed image. Um, you've got the geometry for lens distortion. Um, it will download um, automatic profiles for your camera and lens combination and apply automatic distortion control, etc. onto your image. Again, you have full control over that. Lots of other filters and film packs and um, stuff you can deal with there, but that's basically how I do it. So in a nutshell, noise reduction first and then I work from the top down, tweaking the image to get it how I like it. Once I've done that, I simply uh, export to disk, uh, and I'll nearly always export to DNG uh, um, because I want to further process in Photoshop. Uh, I'll leave you to look at the export options. That takes a short while to process, mainly because of noise reduction. Uh, down here you can see the progress uh, on, on the, uh, the the program icon uh, that I've put on my toolbar down there. It doesn't take long, just uh, uh, 30 seconds to a minute. Um, when you export, if you've got 20, 30 or 100 images all in this uh, row here, you can do all your processing for each image individually. You can copy processing from one image to another uh, and then you can select them all and export the whole lot in one big go. Um, now you can see that that's uh, that's virtually done there, and then the green will vanish as it's done there, and then go back to the folder, and you can see it's created a, a settings profile for the image and the DNG image there. The DNG, I'll bring that into Photoshop right there, uh, and then as you can see, the, the the contrast isn't as much as I would like, so I'll, I'll, it's a little little bit washed out. So I'll pull in a little more contrast, um, the blacks and whites. Um, shouldn't need doing though because we've got some uh, bright spots there. Uh, I'll give it a little bit of clarity and a little more vibrance and a tiny bit of saturation. And I'll open the image in Photoshop. Uh, because it's a, a, a softish landscape shot, I don't want to use sharpening on it, but uh, with many images like bird shots, and I would, I would use. Um, uh, Adobe's wonderful smart sharpen tool which I love to use uh, brings out lots of detail but that's my process in a nutshell thanks for watching